We see many technological innovations during periods of war, and World War II was no exception, with many ideas like atomic weapons, penicillin, jet engines and radar being used as part of a global arms race. As with any period of knowledge expansion, some inventions were more outlandish than others, for example, building an aircraft carrier out of ice or using pigeons as guided bombs. Subjects I've done videos on in the past, and as always, links are in the description below. In this video we'll be looking at a device that straddles the line between ingenious and ridiculous, but all the same is a very interesting footnote on weapons history, <coughs> as it recycled an ancient delivery method for use in a modern war. It would be the world's first weapon with a range spanning continents, beating the world's first ICBM, the Soviet R7. Known as the Japanese fire balloon to the US, or Fugu in Japanese, were devices used as a bit of a last ditch effort to bring the war to the US heartland, intended to bring terror and fear to America whom for the most part of World War II had been relatively safe from aerial bombardment on the mainland. The intentions of the fire balloons creating massive damage and panic didn't come to fruition, as many technological and environmental factors hindered the weapon's effectiveness. Japan during the war didn't manage to follow up its attack on Pearl Harbor with any substantial attack on US soil, apart from the Aleutian Islands campaign and pot shots at the US coast from Japanese submarines. Oddly our story begins with the 1883 eruption of Mount Krakatoa, bear with me on this. The eruption of the volcano hit a sound level of 310 decibels and launched 20 million tonnes of sulphur into the atmosphere. Due to the magnitude of the environmental impact of such a world event, many scientists tracked its effects over the coming years, most notably the spread of particulates in the atmosphere, which caused the volcanic winter and lowered world temperatures by 1.2 degrees centigrade. Weather watchers followed the effects of the eruption in the sky, discovering what would be named as the equatorial smoke stream, caused by a stream of fast moving air in the atmosphere. In the 1920s, meteorologists Wasabiru Oishi discovered one such smoke screen over Mount Fuji, Japan, with persistent strong westerly winds. Between 1926 and 1944, Oishi published 19 reports of this phenomenon and tested the jet stream by sending up pilot balloons and tracked them as they went into the atmosphere. Oishi discovered strong winter winds at 30,000 feet. His findings went relatively unnoticed internationally, partially due to being written in Esperanto but the Imperial Japanese Army's number 9 research laboratory thought they could make use of Oishi's research to launch an attack on the US. Under Major General Sayushi Kusaba, the research laboratory devised a plan to send large balloons into the jet stream to deliver various bombs and incendiary devices to the US homeland. The stream enabled such a weapon to travel the 5,000 miles in around 3 days. Now the concept of using balloons in a war was not a new one as the platform had been used as early as the late Han Dynasty, when fire lanterns were used for long distance signalling. Fast forward to 1782 and the Montgolfier brothers first successfully flew their rigid severs in France, eventually having a military impact in 1794 at the Battle of Fleurs, when it was used for observation. For the next 100 years, balloons were used in both observation and attack, until the invention of the airplane stole the aeronautical crown. Now the Fugus weren't the first use of balloons for an unmanned attack during World War II. The British during Operation Outward used cheaply made free flying hydrogen filled balloons to attack Germany between 1942 and 1944. The balloons were deployed with incendiary devices, bombs or trailing metal cables intended to short circuit power lines. The operation was deemed a success as it tied up German resources in fighting fires and occupying the Luftwaffe as they sent up planes to shoot down the balloons. With a cost of in today's money around £90 per balloon, the cost to damage ratio was pretty good as power lines were downed and crops burned, costing an estimated £50 million worth of damage in today's money. During Operation Outward, around 99,000 balloons were launched. Let's get back to the Japanese and their own balloon program. In 1944, the Japanese Imperial Army hatched a plan to build a hydrogen balloon capable of reaching and striking the US mainland, 
the balloons would have to reach and stay at an altitude of 30,000 feet to stay in the jet stream. They started off with an experimental Type B, designed by the Navy for testing the feasibility of using balloons for such an attack. Consisting of a construction made out of rubberized silk and spanning a 9 meter diameter. However, this construction method proved to leak too much. Quickly, the Type B was superseded by a larger bomb carrying variant with a 10 meter diameter, using instead of silk and rubber, a type of paper called washi derived from mulberry bushes. The paper was known to be very resilient, however, it could only be manufactured in smallish paper squares. To create a surface large and strong enough, the paper was laminated in three or four layers stuck together with devil's tongue paste. Due to the work being fiddly, many of the workers employed to do the laminations were Japanese schoolgirls. The assembly took place all over the country in any available large indoor space, for instance theatre halls. The new construction material helped to combat the effects of hydrogen in different conditions, as it expands in the sun and contracts at night, causing the balloon to rise and fall. However, the washi paper was not enough to counteract the altitude changes. The engineers devised an ingenious method for controlling the height of the balloon via a battery, barometer box, vent valves, ballast bags of sand and tiny explosives. These systems would be called the brain box by the US after dissecting captured units. The barometer box would detect when the balloon fell below 30,000 feet and would fire one of its many small explosive charges to discard a sandbag, shedding weight and thus allowing the balloon to climb back up to the desired altitude. Conversely, if a height of 38,000 feet was reached, the barometer box would detect this and vent some hydrogen gas via a release valve, thus lowering the device's altitude. Also, the valve would also open if the pressure in the balloon reached a certain level to avoid it from bursting. The ballast was carried on a large wheel with four spokes made out of lightweight aluminium, and to stop the whole vehicle from becoming unbalanced, two sandbags would be jettisoned at once. Also on the ring were the bombs or incendiary devices and the whole system was designed to run for three days, roughly enough time to reach the continental US, at which time the ordnance was dropped. At the same time, a 19.5 meter long slow burn fuse was lit. This was wrapped around the center of the balloon, giving 84 minutes before a flash bomb went off, destroying any evidence of the balloon. All the equipment on board weighed around 454 kilograms. The type of ordnance carried on board varied including 15 kilogram bombs, 12 kilogram thermite based incendiary devices and other smaller thermite bombs. All of which were intended to set fires and potentially burn crops or just generally cause fear and mayhem. Some 9,300 balloons were made with an estimated success rate of 10%. It was decided that the best time to launch the balloon attack should be between November and March, due to the jet stream having its fastest winds in the winter. However, this would cause issues with the incendiary devices, as during the winter was when the US received most of its precipitation, and crops and forests wouldn't be dry enough to set alight. The campaign was launched from nine stations at Otsu, which had its own hydrogen generating facility, with six stations at Chiba, and six stations in Fukushima. The last two had to source its own hydrogen from off-site. There were only 50 predicted days with favourable launch conditions, resulting in around 200 balloons launched on each day combined from all the launch stations. The first balloon was released on the 3rd of November 1944. In each attack, a number of balloons carried a radio zone equipment instead of ordnance to allow the Japanese to track the progress via direction finding stations. On November the 4th, the first balloon was seen by a US patrol boat in San Pedro, LA. The country was put on high alert for an imminent attack. The deluge of balloons did not stop and some were discovered in Oregon, Kansas, Iowa, British Columbia, Manitoba, Alberta, the Yukon, Northwest Territories, Washington, Idaho, South Dakota, Nevada, Texas and Northern Mexico. The balloons proved very hard to shoot down due to their surprising speed and altitude. The government highlighted the immediate threat of forest fires in Pacific coastal woodlands and mobilized 2,700 soldiers, paratroopers and conscientious objectors to fight the outbreaks. The press were asked to suppress any reporting of the attacks in fear of creating panics amongst the general population. Because of this, Japan heard relatively little about the success of the onslaught of the balloons they sent. 
several failed and destroyed balloons were handed over to the authorities and one of the most complete of which was found on the 1st of February 1945. The government set to try and find out where the mysterious attacks had come from. Initially some crazy theories were bounded out including launches from submarines, German prisoners of war and Japanese American internment camps. This was due to no one believing that the weapons could have come directly from Japan. Sandbags that had been recovered from the remains of bombs were sent to the Military Geology Unit of the United States Geological Survey for investigation. The geologist determined the sand had been taken from the vicinity of Chiba. Observation planes were sent to the area and two hydrogen plants were discovered. Soon after they were destroyed by US bombing strikes. In April 1945, Kusaba received orders to halt the balloon attacks as the loss of the hydrogen facilities caused the gas to become hard to source and the mounting costs has seemed to yield no rewards. The attacks did not produce any mass panic or damage as hoped, however there were some casualties linked to the Fugu balloons. During the firefighting efforts, one person lost their life and 20 were injured. One stray balloon short-circuited the power lines near Hanford on the 10th of March 1945, causing the nuclear reactor there to cease producing uranium to the Manhattan Project for one day. The only direct casualties from the balloon attacks was on the 15th of May 1945, when a device had exploded after laying dormant, landing a number of weeks before. Archie Mitchell, a pastor of the Bly Christian and Ministry Alliance Church, his pregnant wife Elsie and five Sunday school students had driven to Gearhart Mountain in South Oregon to have a picnic. Archie dropped off his wife and the five students at Bly and then drove to find a parking space. Soon after an explosion was heard, killing six. In a 1945 interview, Archie explained, as I got out of my car to bring the lunch, the others were not far away and called to me that they had found something that looked like a balloon. I had heard of Japanese balloons so I started shouting a warning not to touch it. But just then there was a big explosion. I ran up there and they were all dead. They had been the only civilians killed on mainland US soil during World War II and the event was marked with a monument in the renamed Mitchell Recreation Center. In the coming years several Japanese civilians involved in the construction of the bombs would visit the memorial to pay their respects and apologize for the damage caused. For the next 30 years parts of Fugu balloons would be discovered allowing further inspection of how the device worked. Even as recent as 2014, the remains of a bomb was discovered in Canada, where it was destroyed by a controlled explosion. On the most part, the US were lucky that more damage had not been caused and what had occurred hadn't been found out by the Japanese, as discovered after the war that plans were set to use the Fugu as a delivery method for chemical and biological weapons, which if they had executed, would have caused a lot of damage to the US and Canadian mainlands. Thank you for watching, this video was brought to you by my patrons listed here. If you'd like to support the channel, you can in the link below from as little as $1 per video. If you enjoyed the video, help the channel out by liking, comments, as well as subscribing, and don't forget to click the bell icon to keep up to date with all new videos. And all that's left to say is thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.